الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته المنتجبين قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولوطا آتيناه حكما وعلما ونجيناه من القرية التي كانت تعمل الخبائث إنهم كانوا قوم سوء فاسقين وأدخلناه في رحمتنا إنه من الصالحين One of the greatest prophets of Allah that is mentioned in the Quran is Prophet Lut السلام, Lot in English and we mentioned in the first day that there are 25 prophets that are mentioned in the Quran although there are 124,000 prophets and messengers because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some are prophets and some are messengers a prophet is different from a messenger. Yesterday we described Prophet Ibrahim السلام, who is a prophet and a messenger. That means he came with a specific message to deliver a message. But then there are prophets like we discussed Hud and Salih. They are prophets of Allah and also Prophet Lut, he's a prophet of Allah. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a prophet to an, an ummah, a nation like Rasulullah, like Nuh, like Musa, like Isa, like Ibrahim. And other times, a prophet could be sent to a village. A prophet could be, could be sent to a small city. So this, this is why we have so many prophets. And we explain that there's a logical reason behind sending prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and he is holding us accountable. We are going to be judged. So therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends teachers. Allah sends guides to show us the way. So one of those prophets that is mentioned in the Quran is Prophet Lut alayhi salam. And Prophet Lut, he, his group of people, they were also punished like the group of, like the people of Prophet Nuh and the people of Hud and the people of Salih. The people of Prophet Lut, the village, the city that they lived in, was also punished because of their actions. Now, Lut alayhi salam, he was from Iraq, just like Ibrahim alayhi salam. Prophet Ibrahim, he was in Ur in Babylon. And yesterday we discussed how after they tried to throw him in the fire. They catapulted him in the fire. Ibrahim and his wife and his nephew Lut, they left Iraq and they went to the Holy Land, to Bayt al-Maqdis. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ وَلُوطًا إِلَى الْأَرْضِ الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا لِلْعَالَمِينَ So that means that Prophet Ibrahim was not alone in his mission. He also had people with him. One of them was his wife. She left with him, Sarah. And the second was his nephew, Prophet Lut salam. Of course, Lut is probably younger than Ibrahim. And Ibrahim, he came with the full message while Prophet Lut was in a helper, a prophet that would help Prophet Ibrahim salam. So they both migrated. They both left the city of Ur and they went to Bayt al-Maqdis. They went to Jerusalem. Allah says in the Quran, barakna fiha lil And that whole area, that whole area from Quds to the north, a little bit to the north, south, east and west, this is called the Holy Land. So Prophet Ibrahim السلام, he went and he settled in the city of Habrun, Hebron, which you could find it on the map today. That was where Prophet Ibrahim السلام, settled in. 
and that was where he lived and he was a prophet of that specific area, that specific city where he would teach people, he would guide people and he would show people the way. Now, Prophet Lut, who's his nephew, he migrated with Ibrahim, but then Prophet Lut, he went to a nearby city, a city that is around 20 to 30 kilometers away from Hebron, and that is the city of Sadum, Sodom. Of course, today, if you try to look up Sadum in the map, it's nowhere to be found. It's nowhere to be found. I tried it today. I tried to see where it was, but it's nowhere to be found in the map. And historians say that it was, it was near the Dead Sea. Near the Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea is over there, and next to it is a big desert. Historians say that most likely the city of Sadum was in that area. And it used to be a lively area. It used to, be, it used to have plants. It used to have trees, it used to have water, it used to have grass. Today, if you look at it, you see that it's completely dead. And this is exactly what happened to the people of Ad and the people of Thamud. You see that the civilizations that they had are completely dead. They're all gone because of what they did. Because they brought down the punishment upon themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish people for no reason. Because of their actions they bring down the wrath of Allah upon themselves and upon people around them. And this story and the stories of the prophets before Prophet Lut, they're all lessons for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't just tell us stories in the Qur'an for the sake of entertainment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us these stories so that we learn. This is why Allah constantly says, أَفَلَا يَتَذَكَّرُونَ أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ do they not realize? Do they not ponder? Look at the people before you. These were civilizations. They were people that thought that they had everything in control. But then the adab of Allah came down upon them. So we mentioned the story of Hud and the story of Salih. These stories are not mentioned in the Bible. But the story of Prophet Ibrahim is mentioned in the Bible in the Old Testament. And the story of Lut, Lot, is also mentioned in the Bible. Although we Muslims, and specifically the followers of the Ahlul Bayt, we do not accept everything that is mentioned in the Bible. And we don't accept the way the prophets are portrayed. Because you, if you read the Bible, you see that sometimes the prophets, they are described in ways that a normal person, a normal sane person would not commit these acts. A normal person with a little bit of morality would not commit these acts. But the Old Testament describes some of the prophets of Allah, including Lut, Nuh, some of the other prophets. The Old Testament can, uh, accuses them of doing things that a prophet of Allah would not do, let alone a, a, a normal person would not do, let alone a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we believe that the prophets of Allah are infallible, ma'soom. And this is something that is specific to the Shia school of thought. You find that the non-Shia school of thought, they say that the prophets of Allah, they are infallible only when they are delivering the message. So that means Rasulullah, only when he is delivering the message, only when he is teaching people, he is errorless. But in his home, with his family, in his private life, even Rasulullah could make mistakes. But we, the followers of the Ahlul Bayt, we do not accept this. We cannot accept this for two very important reasons. One is a logical reason. The aql tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot, Allah does not send someone who this person makes mistakes and then he expects us to not make mistakes. Does that make sense? Does a teacher do this? If a teacher comes and he's teaching students something and then he keeps making mistakes, one mistake after another, a third, fourth, and then he punishes the students when they make a mistake. This is not justice. The justice of Allah calls us, out of the justice of Allah, we conclude that the prophets of Allah have to all be ma'soom because Allah is complete. 
Allah does not make mistakes and therefore Allah does not appoint someone who makes mistakes because that means the message, if the, if the messenger is going to, if there's a problem with the messenger, then that means there's a problem with the message. And if there's a problem with the message, then that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to, it's going to affect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, logic tells us that all of the anbiya, all of the prophets of Allah, they are ma'soom during their private life or their public life. Because the private and the public life, how do you draw the line between private and public life? When religion, a lot of it has to do with the private life. This is the first logical reason. And then there are many um, Quranic reasons, many hadith reasons, reasons that we derive from the Quran. Uh, proofs from the Quran and proofs from the hadith. One is the verse that we recited yesterday discussing Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam after Prophet Ibrahim passed all of the tests. We discussed the numerous tests that Prophet Ibrahim had to deal with. After he passed all of the tests, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِذِ ابْتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنْ After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Ibrahim, Ibrahim passed the test. Then Allah tells him, قَالَ إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامًا Allah tells him, now you have received the position of Imam. And of course, Imam, it's not just the Imam that we, like the Imams that we speak about, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Imam al-Hasan, Imam al-Hussein. Imam is more general in this. Where Rasulullah is even an Imam in this. It means leader. Leader appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامًا Prophet Ibrahim says, قَالَ وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِي What about my progeny? What about my children? Will they also have this position of imama? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replies, and here's the proof for the infallibility of prophets and imams. Allah replies, قَالَ لَا يَنَالُ عَهْدِ الظَّالِمِينَ The zalim, the oppressor, does not take this position. And from this verse, we conclude two very important conclusions that really are the foundations of our belief system, especially the Shia belief system. The first is that the Imam and the Prophet and whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends as a Khalifa should be appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like Allah appoints all of the Prophets, He also has the right to appoint the Imams. Because Allah says, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. I am the one who does the ja'al. The ja'al is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first, that the Khalifa cannot be chosen by people. Let a million people, let everyone on earth say that this person is a representative of God. But if Allah says that this person is my representative, the one who Allah chooses. Because Allah says, I am the one who has, I, I am the one who chooses who my representative is. This is the first point. And the second, Allah says, لا ينال عهد الظالمين. The zalim, the oppressor does not take, that does not have that position. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not give someone who makes sin, someone who oppresses Allah by sinning, or oppresses himself, or oppresses other people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not allow that person to be his representative. Because if an oppressor is the representative of Allah, then that means that Allah is also an oppressor. And Allah is adil, Allah is just. Therefore, we conclude that the prophets of Allah are all infallible. So here, although the story of Prophet Lut is mentioned in the Bible, in the Old Testament, but the Old Testament mentions a lot of things that the prophets did that are very wrong. A normal person would not commit these acts. So how do we come and conclude that a prophet of Allah does these acts. So, the story is mentioned in the Old Testament, but we don't accept everything that is mentioned. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Prophet Lut to the people of Sadum, Sadum. Allah sends them, and this group of people, the Prophet of Allah came to guide them, came to show them the way, came to teach them, and show them the way, but they were punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like the people of Ad, just like the people of Thamud, just like the people of Prophet Nuh. Why? Because they transgressed. Because they broke the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah does not punish a group of people 
unless he sends a prophet to them, unless he sends a, a guide to them, unless he sends someone to show them the way. And then Allah gives them many opportunities to repent, many opportunities to do well, to let go of the bad habits. But they continue to persist. They continue to insist on the bad habits and therefore they were punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the acts that they would do, the people of Prophet Lut, was that they would sexually assault people from the same gender. And this started off by the narration, the hadith says it was because of their greed. They were so greedy and they were living in Sadum. So people would pass by their city, travelers would pass by their city. They were so greedy that they did not want anyone to pass by their city. So once a, a caravan, a group of people passed by their city, they would go and attack that caravan and they would sexually assault the members of that caravan, even if they were of the same gender. So this, it started off with stopping anyone who is traveling until, according to the hadith, until it became a habit, until it became something that they would do. And it was something that they would constantly do and they would insist on that act. Prophet Lut, by the order of Allah, he comes to them to guide, to guide them, to show them the way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the Quran, كَذَّبَتْ قَوْمُ لُوطٍ الْمُرْسَلِينَ the people of Lut, the nation of Lut, they denied all of the Mursaleen, all of the messengers, all of the prophets. Now, did Allah send them many prophets or He sent them one prophet? No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them Prophet Lut alayhi salam. But Allah describes, كَذَّبَتْ قَوْمُ لُوطٍ المرسلين. They denied all of the prophets. Why? Because the message of the prophets, it's all one. The prophets of Allah, they have a universal message. What Lut called for was the same message that Ibrahim called for. It was the same message that Rasulullah called for. The same message that Musa, Isa, Yunus, Yahya, all of them, they called for the same message. Why? Because the source is one. When the source is one, that means the message is also one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent these prophets. And this is, this is proof that all of these prophets were sent by Allah. Because all of the prophets, they came and they invited people for the same thing. Imagine one nation, they send ambassadors. They send ambassadors to go all over the world. All of the ambassadors, if they all come with the same message, you come and you see that this ambassador, he has one message, the same message, and a third one, fourth one, fifth one, they all have the same message. What does that mean? That means that they were all sent by one source. And this is one of the proofs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists and He sent all of the prophets. If the prophets of Allah, one comes and He tells people to do this, another one tells people to do another thing, they contradict one another, then it would show that there is multiple sources. But because throughout, from the beginning of time until now, the message is all one, therefore the source is also one. So, by denying Prophet Lut, they denied all of the messengers, all, the full message and all of the prophets. كَذَّبَتْ قَوْمُ لُوطٍ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِذْ قَالَ لَهُمْ أَخُوهُمْ Lut, أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Once again, Allah describes أَخُوهُمْ, their, their brother, even though Prophet Lut migrated from Iraq. But Prophet Lut, he lived amongst them and he came to them with brotherly advice. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes as as Hud, he is the brother of Ad, and uh, Salih is the brother of Thamud. Also, Lut, he is he is basically their brother because he came with brotherly advice. He's not bossing them around in a derogatory way and forcing them to do something. He's coming to them with brotherly advice. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُمْ أَخُوهُمْ Lut, أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Why don't you have piety in Allah? Fear Allah, what you're doing is wrong. And then he tells them, Inni lakum rasulun ameen. I'm a messenger of Allah. I'm a trustworthy messenger of Allah. Fattakullaha wa ati'oon. Worship Allah. 
and believe in Allah. Follow me. Follow the order that I'm telling you. وَمَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَجْرٍ إِنَّ أَجْرِي إِلَّا عَلَى رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Also the same message as the previous prophets. مَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَجْرٍ All of the prophets, they came to their people, they told them, I'm not asking for anything in return. I'm not your prophet so that you pay me. I'm not trying to make a business out of being your prophet. I'm trying to guide you. I'm trying to show you the way. But they denied the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another verse, Allah describes, He tells them, أَتَأْتُونَ الذُّكْرَانَ مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ You are men, and you are interested in men. You are interested in men. You sexually assault other men. أَتَأْتُونَ الذُّكْرَانَ مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ وَتَذَرُونَ مَا خَلَقَ لَكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ عَادُونَ you are deviants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created spouses for you. Allah created you in pairs. You go and you leave the spouses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for you, the pair that Allah created for you, and you go after other men. Allah says in the Quran, Allah says in the Quran that He created all women ayatihi from the signs of Allah. One of the miracles of Allah is that all of the creation, even to the smallest insect, they are created in two pairs. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his signs, it's a miracle of Allah that he created. Which creator can come and create two spouses, two genders that perfectly match one another psychologically, socially, biologically, match one another, in need of one another. Allah says in the Quran, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ From the signs of Allah, أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ He created for you, مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ Out of yourselves, أَزْوَاجًا Pairs, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So that you may find sukoon, so that you may find tranquility with one another. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And He placed the love and the mercy. But these people, the people of Prophet Lut, they had deviated from from, the na from nature, from logic, and from common sense. They started going and physically attacking people from the same gender. And this is because the desire had kicked in. And once the desire kicks in, sometimes people lose complete control. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why, why do we have so much rules of hijab, rules of modesty, rules of iffa and chastity? Why? Is it because Allah just wants to boss us around? No. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want us to fall into a catastrophe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want us to bring ourselves away from the right path. But you see that once someone is brought away from the right path, then that's it. It's going to be very difficult to go back. It's going to be very difficult to go back and resist. Once the desire kicks in, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everyone with desires. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gave us a means to deal with that desire. Any desire that we have, whatever desire, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the right way. When I'm hungry, you go, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have created you so much halal food. There are some people that go and they eat the halal food, which also happens to be the healthy food. And then there are some that always want to go after the non-healthy haram food. And same when it comes to self-satisfaction. When it comes to satisfaction, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a beauty, natural beauty, so much beauty out there. There are some people, they leave all of the creation of Allah and their only means of satisfaction is through haram. Their only means of satisfaction is through cheating, through abusing, through stealing, through gambling. And also one of the means is what the people of Prophet Lut used to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates for us and out of ourselves, spouses. And Allah says, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا That is the way that you will find satisfaction. That is the way, that is the natural way that you will be able to reproduce, you will be able to continue life. But there are some that 
decide to deviate from the path because they lose control of themselves. And Allah tells Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, He tells him, لَعَمْرُكَ إِنَّهُمْ فِي سَكْرَتِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ they become intoxicated by their desires. They're not drunk, but their desires, it leads them to go away, deviate away from the right path. And it's as if they are intoxicated. لعمرك, Allah swears by the life of Rasulullah. They reject the biological way, the natural way, and they go after a false way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create us in that way. He comes to guide them. He comes to show them the way. He comes to help them. He comes to give them brotherly advice. What do they reply to him? They reply by threatening him. They tell him, قَالُوا لَئِن لَمْ تَنْتَهِ يَا لُوطِ لَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُخْرَجِينَ Oh Lut, if you do not stop, then we will kick you out of our town. We will kick you out of our town. We will excommunicate you. And then, قَالَ إِنِّي لَعَمَلِكُمْ مِنَ الْقَالِينَ He tells them, I don't have a problem with you as an individual. I have a problem with your act. And this is a very important point. Today, many people, they come and they ask. They say at the schools, at the universities, in our society, there are many that decide to live this way, being homosexual. Now, what does Islam say about this? Here, this verse answers. Prophet Lut السلام, he doesn't tell them, I have a problem with you as a human. He doesn't tell them, I have a problem with you as an individual. I have a problem with your action. I have a problem with your act. Some people, they come and they say, but we were born like that. This was, of course, today in the universities, no one says this anymore. This was the argument that was used 10, 20, 30 years ago. They were saying people are born like that. Today, no one uses that argument. Today, people say people are free to do whatever they want. One day with men, one day with women, one day going back to men, going back to women. Today, it's I'm free to do whatever I want and there's no one that can tell me what to do. This is the argument that's used today. But if someone comes and says, you were born like that. Yes, born like that. There are many people that are born with certain qualities. Does that mean that just because I'm born with a desire, I should not control my desire? Men have desire for women. Does that give them a green light to go and do whatever they want, whenever they want, however they want? No, there are rules in life. And this is not just Islam and religion that comes on such rules communities, societies, even secular societies. Even secular societies, they set certain rules. Rules of marriage, rules of engagement with one another. For example, in some societies, they say polygamy is wrong. Polygamy is, is illegal. Does anyone come and say, let love win? Let love win? And allow polygamy? No one uses that. And this is, this is the biggest proof that it's all what people want to do. People want to do, and this is because it's socially constructed. Slowly, de people deviate slowly from the haqq. And one of the hadiths of the Ahlul Bayt, it says that the act of homosexuality increases in a society once zina increases. Once adultery increases, then the act of people will resort to the act of homosexuality. And it makes sense. Because people, once they see that they are free to do whatever they want, their brain tells them, I want what I can't have. I want something that I can't have. And they go after something that is wrong and will eventually harm them and harm other people and harm society as a whole. So here Prophet, Prophet Lut, he tells them, قَالَ إِنِّي لِعَمَلِكُمْ مِنَ الْقَالِينَ I don't have a problem with you. I have a problem with your act. If you have that desire and you control that desire, just like a straight person is, is supposed to control their desires, then I don't have a problem with you. And even this act of labeling today, this act of labeling, it's a wrong act. Today, if someone is a thief, if someone steals once in their life, if someone commits adultery, if someone does what, drinks, if someone... We're not supposed to label this person. But here in the West, 
And our thinking, we start labeling. This person is a homosexual. This person is an adulteress. This person is constantly labeling people. In Islam, Allah says, don't label people. Why? Because when you label someone, someone committed one act, when you label someone, you are basically closing the door of istighfar. You're closing the way, the path for this person to repent, to go back. Because you already gave this person a title. You already labeled this person with an act. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, anyone who commits one, any act, whatever it is, the door of repentance is always open and any person could repent. Repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's all about self-control. It's all about controlling the ch chastity and controlling the modesty. If someone says, I was born like that, does a judge today, if a, uh, you know, in the criminals, there's a, there's a study that says that criminals, and the doctors would probably be more educated about this. Um, the criminals, there's a study called criminal biology where the criminal, they say that this person, there's a higher chance in certain group of people based because of their testosterone, because of their DNA, more chances, there's a higher chance in certain people in society to commit a crime. There are some that say even child molesters, there is something in their DNA, something in them that pushes them to go and do that. Today, if someone goes to a judge and says, it's in my DNA, I was born like that. Will the judge accept that? No. Same with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tells us to control ourselves. And this is the message of Prophet Lut to his people. He comes and he tells them, إِنَّكُمْ لَتَأْتُونَ الرِّجَالَ شَهْوَةً مِن دُونِ النِّسَاءِ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ مُسْرِفُونَ You are transgressing. You are going. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created spouses for you. You are going after the same spouse. وَمَا كَ Allah says, وَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا أَخْرَجُوهُمْ مِنْ قَرْيَتِكُمْ إِنَّهُمْ أُنَاسٌ يَتَطَهَّرُونَ They say, the jawab, the reply was, take, kick out Lut and his, and his family, kick Lut out and the people that are with him. Why? Because they are purified. إِنَّهُمْ أُنَاسٌ يَتَطَهَّرُونَ They are... They, they, إنهم أناس يتطهرون. They, they choose to live a purified lifestyle, meaning that, and this from this verse, some scholars have concluded that these people, the people of Lut, it wasn't just that they were committed, they were committing a wrong act. They would transgress against people. Any visitor that comes into the city, they would go and harass them, and they would kick out anyone who is متطهر, anyone who chooses to live a good lifestyle, following the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after they continued insisting, and they, they, this act, it wasn't just a private act. Now sometimes, if someone sins, whatever sin it is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at it very differently if this person is doing it privately, or if this person is doing it out in public. There's a very big difference. The difference, the one who does it in private knows that they're doing, what they're doing is wrong. But sometimes people, they can't control themselves. They, they lose control of themselves and then they repent. But then the one who comes out publicly, the one who publicly commits wrong acts, any wrong act, whatever it is, then that means that this person doesn't care. Doesn't care what people say. Doesn't care what Allah, what, what Allah has, is going to view him. This person just wants to sin. This person just wants to satisfy themselves. And these people they would come out in public and they would attack any visitor that would come in the city. So Prophet Lut, he asked Allah to punish them. He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to punish them and the adab of Allah was coming. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before punishing them, Allah all, always gives them another chance. And these people, Allah gave them a chance. And this story it's mentioned in the Quran with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending angels. These angels, they came in the form of young, good looking young men. These angels first, they go to Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Because Ibrahim 
was about 20, 30 miles away in Hebron and there in Sadum. So they go to Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah mentions the story in Surah al dhariyat Allah says in the Quran, هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ ضَيْفِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ Have you heard of the story of the guests that came to Ibrahim? إِذْ دَخَلُوا عَلَيْهِ فَقَالُوا سَلَامًا قَالَ سَلَامٌ قَوْمٌ مُنْكَرُونَ They came and they said salam to him. He did not know them. They looked very different. They looked very strange. He said salam to them. فَرَاغَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ فَجَاءَ بِعِجْلٍ سَمِينٍ he went, he had guests, and yesterday we mentioned that Ibrahim was so generous, he doesn't eat alone. So he sees guests, he comes and he brings a calf, he kills it, he slaughters it, he cooks it, and he brings it for them. He offers food for them. They're guests, so he offers them food. He placed it in front of them, and he tells them, don't you eat? Why don't you eat? They didn't eat because they're angels. They didn't eat. Once he saw that they didn't eat, he became scared. Allah says in the Quran, He became afraid because of, with the, any, you know, if a stranger comes and you give them food and they don't eat, that means they have a problem with you. They told him, don't be afraid. وَبَشَّرُوهُ بِغُلَامٍ عَلِيمٍ Yesterday we mentioned how Prophet Ibrahim didn't have children. Allah gave him Ismail from Hajar, but Sarah, his wife, who migrated with him for a very long time until she became an old lady and Ibrahim became an old man, she didn't have a child. Here, these angels, they came and they tell him, وَبَشَّرُوهُ بِغُلَامٍ عَلِيمٍ They come and they tell him, you're going to have a child. You're going to, your wife, Sarah, she's going to have a child. Allah describes her reaction. His wife, she came out of happiness, out of shock. She hit her face and she said, I'm an old lady. Imagine an old lady, 90 year old lady. She goes to the doctor and they tell her you're pregnant. What is her reaction going to be? This is what happened to the wife of Prophet Ibrahim. And then the angels replied, قَالُوا كَذَلِكَ قَالَ رَبُّكِ هُوَ قَالَ رَبُّكِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْحَكِيمُ الْعَلِيمُ This is what Allah has destined. You did not give up. You did not give up. You did not lose faith in Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a child. Then that was their first objective. The objective of the angels Second, قَالُوا إِنَّا أُرْسِلْنَا إِلَىٰ قَوْمٍ مُجْرِمِينَ Second, after giving him the good news, now they tell him, we were sent to these people that transgressed. Referring to the people of Prophet Lut. لِنُرْسِلَ عَلَيْهِمْ حِجَارَةً مِنْ طِينَ To punish them, to bring the torment of Allah upon them. مُسَوَّمَةً عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ لِلْمُسْرِفِينَ فأخ... فَأَخْرَجْنَا مَنْ كَانَ فِيهَا مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ However, we will take out Prophet Lut. We will take out Prophet Lut. فَمَا وَجَدْنَا فِيهَا غَيْرَ بَيْتٍ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Because in that village, there is not one house of Muslim. Not one house that has submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these people have transgressed. They have turned against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They kicked out all of the good. So everyone is deserving of the punishment. So the adab of Allah came upon them. And the hadith says that Ibrahim from Hebron, from Habrun, he was able to see the burning of Sadum. He was able to see the burning of the people of Sadum once the adab fell upon them. In another verse, Allah describes, because Lut, the story of Prophet Lut is mentioned in numerous verse, chapters in the Quran. قَالَ رَبِّنْ صُرْنِي عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْمُفْسِدِينَ He asks Allah to help him from the one, from the people who are bad. They're, they're doing wrong. وَلَمَّا جَاءَتْ رُسُلُنَا إِبْرَاهِيمٌ بِالْبُشْرَى قَالُوا إِنَّا مُهْلِكُوا أَهْلَ هَذِهِ أَهْلِ هَذِهِ الْقَرْيَةِ إِنَّ أَهْلَهَا كَانُوا ظَالِمِينَ 
the, the, the angels came to Ibrahim with good news, but then they also tell him that we are going to bring the wrath of Allah upon the people of this village. Then Ibrahim is worried about his nephew. He knows his nephew Lut is in that village. He tells them, Qala inna fiha Lutan. He tells them, but Lut is in that city. If you bring the adab, Lut is also going to die. And then they reply, Qalu nahnu a'lamu biman fiha. We know who's in it and the adab of Allah is going to come upon the wrongdoers. Allah does not punish the ones who did good. Allah does not punish the ones who do well. Allah punishes the ones who do wrong. Now, these guests, the hadith says that these, after leaving Ibrahim, these guests, they come and Lut is in his farm. He's working in his farm outside the village. He sees a bunch of good-looking, handsome men coming into his city. And Lut, he was worried. Because every time a guest comes, his people, they come and they harass the guest. They come and they try to assault the guest. So he's worried. The hadith says that he kept them, he tries to hide them. Once it turned dark, then he takes them into his home. He takes them into his home so that they could stay. He doesn't know that they're angels of Allah. He thinks that they're just normal travelers. He takes them into his home, but his wife, she finds out. And his wife, the wife of Prophet Lut and the wife of Prophet Nuh, they are described in the Quran as two women who were married to prophets, yet they turned against the prophets of Allah and they were punished. The wife of Nuh, she drowned, and the wife of Lut, she was also punished when the people of Prophet Lut were punished. Allah says in the Quran, Allah مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مْرَأَةَ نُوحٍ وَمْرَأَةَ لوط كَانَتَا تَحْتَ عَبْدَيْنِ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا صَالِحَيْنِ فَخَانَتَاهُمَا فَلَمْ يُغْنِيَا عَنْهُمَا مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا They were living with a prophet, but they turned against the prophet. فَخَانَتَاهُمَا They betrayed. Now here, what kind of betrayal? Scholars say that this is an ideological betrayal. The wives of the prophets, they never had any type of sexual betrayal against the prophets. And this is a, from a hadith from the prophet where, where Rasulullah says, مَا بَغَتْ إِمْرَأَةُ نَبِيٍّ قط. No wife of a prophet committed an act of adultery. But this is a type of ideological betrayal where she turned against Allah. And also scholars say that these wives of the prophets at a point in their life, they were mu'minat, they were believers. Otherwise, the Prophet would not marry a lady who is not a believer. But then, later on in their life, they turned against the Prophet and against the message of the Prophet. So Allah describes what happens. She goes, the wife of Lut, she realizes that Lut brought these guests. She goes on the roof of the house and she, she starts clapping. And she starts whistling and she lights a fire. She lights a fire so that the people of the city know that there are guests in the house of Lut. So that they know there are people, travelers, that are in the house of Lut. They don't know, she doesn't know their angels. Lut doesn't know their angels and the people don't know. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَمَّا أَنْ جَاءَتْ رُسُلُنَا لُوطًا سِيَ بِهِمْ Once the guests came to Lut, they were oppressed. They came and they disrespected them. Meaning people came, the whole city, they came out and they tried to assault these angels. Not knowing they're angels, but they're, because they were guests. See abihim wa bihim dar'an wa qalu la takhaf wa la tahzan. Now, Lut was very embarrassed. He comes and he tells the people, you are embarrassing me, these are guests. Here, the angels, they tell him, we are angels of Allah. And we are going to punish these people. And they tell him the story. <laughs> we are bringing down the adab on the people of this village. Allah says, We saved him and his family. Maybe his, his uh, children, 
and people that believed in him except his wife. She remained in the city and they left. Prophet Lut alayhi salam, he left the city at night and the adab came down by subh, by, with, the, with the sunlight. That was when the adab came down. And Allah says, Alaysa subhu bi qareeb. Isn't morning, isn't morning close? So the adab of Allah came upon the people of Prophet Lut. And this is the story of Prophet Lut alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse, فَلَمَّا جَاءَ أَمْرُنَا جَعَلْنَا عَالِيَهَا سَافِلَهَا وَأَمْطَرْنَا عَلَيْهَا حِجَارَةً مِنْ سِجِّيلٍ مَنْضُودٍ The city was flipped over and it was rained with rocks, burning rocks. مُسَوَّمَةً عِنْدَ رَبِّكْ وَمَا هِيَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ بِبَعِيدٍ And this adab is not far from the zalimin. It's not far from the oppressors. Don't think that just the people of Hud, the people of Salih, the people of Lut and Nuh were punished. This adab of Allah can come at any time. So this is the moral of the story of Prophet Lut alayhi salam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our a'mal during the holy month of Ramadan and allow us to learn lessons from the holy Quran. والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين